Singer Dina Carroll and a review of last weekend's Mardi Gras Festival. Gay Time TV over on BBC Two in a couple of minutes. <laughs> A Chicago Hope double bill in half an hour on BBC One. First, heaven is one small screen and a remote control. It's only TV, but I like it. TV, but I like it. The show with a heart of gold, nerves of steel and a knob of butter. And we're delighted to say that the show is already being hailed by critics as not Vanessa. Let me uh, introduce you to the teams. Our first team captain, Jack D, was once described as a midget terrier in a flashy suit. Great news for his tailor, but terrible news for the dry cleaner every time he passed a lamppost. Jack D, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In the history of popular entertainment, surely the greatest talents are those known by just their first names. Elvis, Madonna, Cher. So let me introduce Trevor Neal and Simon Hickson. <laughs> <laughs> and completing the lineup, a comedian and panel game veteran whose last seaside dip resulted in the tragic death of over 4,000 cormorants, Mr. Mark Lamar. <laughs> Opposing Jack in almost every respect, a comedian described by the Daily Mail as promiscuous and forthright, by the Sun as the undisputed master of the double entendre, and by the Sydney Herald as that puff off the telly, <laughs> Mr Julian Clary. <laughs> by his side, one of the country's best-loved comedy actors, tonight in the unusual role of enjoying being the macho one for a change, <laughs> please welcome Mr John Inman. <laughs> And finally, on Julian's team, a highly dangerous animal, normally a beast like this, would only be allowed on TV if accompanied by two highly trained handlers. We couldn't afford that, so we had him spayed instead. <laughs> it's Wolf. <laughs> Our first round concerns the secrets that the stars want to hide. Keith Chegwin's boozing, Bruce Forsyth's hair, and Dale Winton's wife. Alan. <laughs> we'll show the team's three seemingly arbitrary pieces of TV footage which are clues to infamous moments of British television. Their task is to find the story that links them. So, Julian's team, I'll come to you first. Uh, can you tell us what memorable TV moment connects these three clips? The government has ruled that children's shell suits, the popular lightweight track suits, are to carry fire hazard warning labels. He said that if the United Nations did not give Iraq a clear indication of when sanctions would be lifted, then his government would have to consider suspending all cooperation. They were shell suits, Snooker and Saddam Hussein. What do you think is the, uh, the link? I think it looks like Saddam's just about to burst into song singing Great Balls of Fire. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I read your, the, the CV they sent through. Apparently your thighs are 27 inches. 28. Is that true? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, fancy. <laughs> I only um, have thighs for you. <laughs> You're in a world of your own. <laughs> Thank God. Um, <laughs> so if there's anyone passing by who does have John's medication on him... <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> well, I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> Shell suits are a mistake. Yeah. He's wearing beige. <laughs> Mistake. And there's a man bending over balls. Which is the right thing to do. <laughs> well, we think it, it might be a, a CIA plot to kill Saddam by forcing him to wear an inflammable, <laughs> inflammable shell suit and then to make him play snooker with an abrasive cue. <laughs> what it actually is, I, I think, is that uh, Saddam Hussein is a fanatical snooker player. And, um, yes. He... <laughs> <laughs> I like it yeah. when you agree with yourself. Yeah, yeah. well, hear me out. He, has, he, he keeps all his cues in Iraq. <laughs> oh, I think I know the answer. What would that be? Right. Shell suits and sport. David Icke, sports commentator who wore shell suits, became famous for it. 
and then declared that Saddam Hussein was God. Team captain, what do you, what do you think? Right. Is the answer is um, David Icke, uh, who was a, a, a snooker commentator. Wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was in the sport arena. And uh, he did make a prediction that uh, Saddam Hussein would, uh, would cut up rough. One day, and he. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't, why don't, why don't, why don't, why don't I stop you while you're very nearly ahead? And uh, let's see how close you actually were. If I am given information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day in things they've told told, told us are going to happen, and they happen. They told you Saddam Hussein was dead, and he's That's not. That's right. He's, yes, he is. Well, he, well, I watched his birthday party on the television yesterday. All I, can, all I can say to you is all that glitters is not gold. Hang about and watch and wait. But I'll tell, say two things to watch for and let the alarm bells go if they happen. One is if they suddenly announce he is dead now, therefore they don't have to explain the past and, and what's happened over the last few weeks and the fact that he's been dead for many weeks. And secondly, if they say we've done a deal, he's gone into exile, and part of the deal is not to name the country he has gone to, therefore disappear Saddam, let the alarm bells ring. <laughs> Ding well, dong. I think the bells were ringing for David, actually. <laughs> it snooker was, of course, tenuous. that was the moment when former snooker commentator David Icke appeared on Wogan in 1991 in a turquoise shell suit to announce the death of Saddam Hussein. A fact that Iraq's infamous dictator appears to have skillfully concealed for the past eight years. <laughs> Ike became famous for wearing that turquoise shell suit, which he said he wore in the image of God, which presumably means that this country's most sacred site is the holy city of Lakeside, Thurrock. <laughs> On the Jack's team now, can you piece together the item of TV trivia connecting these three clips? Watch the snakes being charmed. This, by the way, is Mr. Isari. He's the best in town. I had a drink with a Scotch friend of mine. He drunk 50 whiskies in 10 seconds. I said, you don't half drink fast. He said, I had one knocked over once. <laughs> However hard times are for brokers, they're not risking their own money. But there are men on the stock market who do, the jobbers. OK, they were a snake charmer, Roy Walker and some merchant bankers. What's oh. he called again in the middle? <laughs> Roy Walker. <laughs> what is it? Did you say bankers? <laughs> Mr Walker. The first name? Roy. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it if you try, you see. To him, that's like red lorry, yellow lorry, isn't it? It is real, yeah. I know it's a struggle for you, but you can do it if you try. And you don't have to do it for sympathy for the rest of your life, Jonathan. Just like you don't have to come on the show dressed like a shelf packer. <laughs> so Roy Walker... I, I once opened Roy Walker, there was nothing inside. <laughs> 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 These combined to make a TV, a famous yeah. TV moment. Yeah. Well, that's not true. You! <laughs> You're going to regret you ever said that, I'm you. regretting coming on, never yeah, mind speaking. Obviously. <laughs> obviously, but you are, you are so... This is such a wonderful... Roy Walker has only been on two TV shows ever, The Comedians, which I believe that was, yeah. and, and Catchphrase, Say What You See, Catchphrase. I'm asking you for once in your life. I'm right, say what you see. I see a merchant, some merchant <laughs> bank, there's a snake charmer with Roy Walker. Shut your mouth. Mark, <laughs> I'm going to take it through you very slowly so you can follow the process. That's half had enough. <laughs> Mark, come back. Come on, come on. It's not Mark, like you're I'm, oh, I'm taking this seat. I'm Mark, not sitting here. Team, I'm excited. I don't want to sit in here. Jonathan, you don't know the answer, so we've got to sit here for hours oh, and make one up. I was no, trying to... His catchphrase, it was think, a banker was on and he said, what's that? And he said, it's a snake, and it was, uh-uh. This is... This see, is... You know? is it's it's all done. Done. I know the answer. I know the answer. I remember... I do know the answer. Oh, yeah, and the answer is... You're quite right, Jonathan. It's a very good question. Yeah, and you know the answer. And you know why I know you know the answer? Because I showed you this clip at my house about four years ago. That's why I know you know the answer. I've never been to your house. Don't say that to people. <laughs> There's a clip yeah. on, on the, the Say What You See show catchphrase yes. that uh, the answer was Snake Charmer, but it looked like someone to tossing off. You see, <laughs> when we work together, you see what we can achieve. <laughs> let's, see how, how, let's see how wide you are. Centre one. Five seconds. Here we go. One hundred and five, three hundred for a Dumb waiter. Dumb not right. Sean's back. Here's the catchphrase. You gotta keep pressing. There's no bell. Time's money, Sean. Pelican Crossing. You're right. Five seconds. Here we go. Marita. Solid dance man. 
<laughs> Song and Dance Man's good, it's not the one. <laughs> Sean. To cut a long story short. Cut a long story short, that's the one we want. <laughs> Here comes the bonus. <laughs> Concentrate. <laughs> Here we go. Sean. <laughs> Snake Charmer. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so I'm not the only one who lifts a top hat when he masturbates. <laughs> Here we go, uh, ladies. What's so great? I'm Burlington Bertie. Yeah. I rise at 10:30. <laughs> what's so great? The, the woman, the female contestant, she just doesn't get what they're laughing at. <laughs> She's completely in the dark. Okay, at the end of round one, I see that the scores are Julian's team are behind with three points. Jack's team masterfully striding into the lead with five. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, next round harks back to simpler and possibly happier times when a child could have many hours of fun playing with a simple cardboard box, a ball of string, or hunting for Grandad's lucky pipe. A game which, incidentally, led to Grandad serving five years in strange ways. <laughs> it's called Here's One I Made Earlier, where we asked the teams to try and reconstruct an actual Blue Peter accessory concocted by Valerie Singleton from what we lovingly used to call a pile of old crap. Here's the ingredients we gave our team shortly before the show. They are four corks, a squeegee bottle, an India rubber, a piece of red card, some brown felt, a pencil and sharpener, a rubber band, black and red paint, ten studied paper fasteners and some glue. But what do you reckon Valerie Singleton actually made with them? Julian, you, you've got all the bits there. Um, we thought it could be various things. Something to keep your steroids in. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, I decided in the end, and uh, did you want to speak? Sorry, before I say what no, I No, no, love, no, I just, I just want to turn that round because it says fairy. Um... <laughs> well, no, I mine. think it's, I think it's a boxing ring, you see. I think you fix these. Copy. That checks. will be the floor bit. And then these would be the ropes round oh. there. Ingenious. And then you paint it all up. This would be chopped up, would be the kind of audience things there. Yeah. And then out of this, you'd make little boxes. So you'd make a little boxer person. And I don't remember associating Blue Peter with promoting the most noble <laughs> art. <laughs> um, what did you think? What did you guys uh, think Gentlemen, might you be can't... made from that? What, what do you reckon? What do we I thought it could be like a little boxing ring yeah. if you took these four. <laughs> <things>. <laughs> Well, I saw the, the, blue, the episode of Blue Peter that they made this thing. Did this, you? This was the ingredients to make boys own. <laughs> no, it was, because that, these are all the clips from the, from the pierced one. You know, the one that has yeah. all the piercings. And they're from Cork, aren't they? Or somewhere like that. <laughs> and, uh, oh, 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 yeah. oh. No, it was the inside of Vanessa Feltz's head. <laughs> Jack, team fine. captain, uh, what did you come up with what, as your... Did you want me to show you? No, what just I, tell me first. Well, um, I basically... Uh, I believe that this is um, a bird... Um, bird uh, watching uh, uh, kit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, have a look at the minute. Julian, show you made one. Let's see what you made. Let's yeah. see your boxing ring in all its glory. I've had a, I've had a lovely afternoon. Hey, that's there. not so bad. There is the boxing ring, and here, you, you be that one. <laughs> that says round six. Well, that means I can't play you. Yeah? Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, your boots, play. your boots. Hey, how wonderful. <laughs> 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 No, there were only two little players. You could have played later. No. <laughs> you decided to have a tantrum. If I can't play, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, let's have a look at your what was it, a bird watching will, kit for a very pathetic <laughs> child or something. You uh, basically, it's, it, this is. <laughs> This is your hide, and you look. <laughs> and um, what happens, you see, you, uh, you, the bird perches here. <laughs> a 
the cork is actually disguised as a bit of bread. It's actually very sticky. And when the bird lands, he can't move away, so you have time to draw the bustard before he goes. <laughs> And if, if he cuts up nasty, as some birds do, like a swan can break your arm with its wing, you know, um, and you've got these things, and if he gets a bit, you go, go. <laughs> leave now, leave. And, and then you get your drawing done, and that, and let's say, for instance, I did one earlier. I was, I was in the Blue Peter Garden, and that's what I came up with, Jonathan. Well, it's, it's inspired. There's a certain kind of brilliance to work out. I'm not quite sure. Why have you put the big eyes on it? If it's a hive, <laughs> why have you made yourself look like possibly the most threatening human well, being no, no. ever to walk the earth? No, they're binoculars. They're... But even so, the bird would see the binoculars and think, I won't perch on the magic pipe or whatever that is. How many, how many things did they make on Blue Peter that were any good anyway? Yeah, well, there is that. Right, let's just see uh, how close you both were. Here's what Val actually came up with. The pencil dog hound, something I think you'd find very useful indeed. And if I take his head off, You'll see why it's full of pencils and pens and rulers and would be very useful indeed on a desk. There you go. It was a little dog. Here's one that I actually made earlier. Oh, no, I've seen a greeb. <laughs> For authenticity, I've given it just a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> I filled it with some chocolate mousse, so at a child's party you could entertain the children. <laughs> More mousse, Tommy. <laughs> it's chocolate mousse. It's a, it's a perfect centrepiece for your table when perhaps the elderly come round who like animals. More mousse, Grandma. There you go. I didn't think I could hate you more. <laughs> well, there you go. So um, that was that. You were both very, very wrong indeed. Out of a possible three, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you... I've had to suffer violence. <laughs> I'm going to give you two and... Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to give you two as well. Thank you, Jonathan. Just for sheer pathetic ludicrousness. There's any need for that. You can keep your points. No, I, you know. <laughs> At the end of that somewhat clumsy and mildly disturbing round, I see the scores now stand with Julian's team behind. Just five points for you, I'm afraid. But Jack's team heading towards what must surely be a massive victory. They have seven points. <laughs> They say one of the signs of getting old is that you forget things, where you left your keys, what your name is, and who you're married to. As I said to my lovely wife, Jack, just the other day. <laughs> but not so for the elderly in our next round, Granny Knows Best, which features senior citizens talking about TV in the way only they can. We have specially interviewed some game old pensioners describing some of their favourite TV programmes and personalities. For ten points, I want to know <clears throat> what the hell they're on about. Can't remember the names of the people in it, but, um... Oh, yes, yes, dreadful. Yeah. That load mode girl there that used to be the star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Was <laughs> it uh, um, with Richard Spender? <clears throat> Do you remember Richard Spender? Yeah, he's on the BBC Essex. One chap who looked as though he, if he wasn't in prison, he ought to be. Julian yeah. Stein, who do you think? Um, intelligent guess. You're looking the wrong way, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a real wolf, are you? I've just realised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I can't think of We'll have to move on, I think. Yeah, I can't... I can not even going to guess. I've got a clue. Yeah. OK, all right. Next thing. When they said Richard Spender, they just meant Spender. Jimmy Nail. Well, how do you know they weren't talking about Richard and Judy? Because, because they're not called Richard and Judy Spender. No, they're not. It's Richard <laughs> Nagley. Richard... Judy Finnegan. Are you going to hazard a guess? Yeah, Spender. <laughs> <laughs> Here are Rose Lesser from Pearl and David describing the same programme. Can anyone get it this time for five points? I used to get up to lots, lots of mischief in it, really. Probably something you watched if you were desperate, probably had a hangover and wanted to giggle at nothing. <laughs> Don't you know this thing in it? The thing that there. I really liked it. <laughs> but a long while ago when I see it, but I can't remember a lot about it now. Because they haven't put no repeats of that on lately. Because when they put the repeats on, it sort of comes back to you. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go to Julian's team first. Sorry. What do you think it is? Well, I don't know. Um, you don't know. <laughs> it's a knockout. It's a knockout, you're saying? Guys? Uh, panorama. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Not a... right. OK, fingers on buzzers. The team that buzz in first pick up the points and left on the screen. Here we go. The Doddery. 
manager, was she, or...? Is she a gypsy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, come on, carry on. He is a politician today, this man. John? I wasn't really going to say anything, but I just wanted that to light up. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping up appearance. Yeah. Knock yourself out. Have another go. Go on, treat yourself. <laughs> that one's that one's just for you. Okay. Yes. Let's have a bit more. Short, thick-set fellow. He was a, he was a, a porter on the railway station afterwards in a different thing. <laughs> okay, Gillian. Heidi High. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's the holiday camp one that was Heidi High. Uh, it ran for eight years and occupied that slot known to us all as the I think I'll have a bath slot. <laughs> uh, Jack's team looking towards me with dewy eyes because they only have seven points. While Julian's team are romping to what seems a certain victory with a beautiful eight. Hello. <laughs> our next round requires our teams to wear a face that is a mystery to them, like Cher just before the bandages come off. It's the round we call Who Are We? as the Queen apparently asked herself after a night on the ale. <laughs> and my command, Julian and his team will each don a pair of Velcro goggles upon which Jack will attach one of three TV face masks of his choosing, all belonging to a well known show. So, uh, Julian's team, if you'd like to put your goggles on. Here you are. Okay. Hello. Goggle up. The object is for Julian's team to find out <laughs> who they are by asking Jack's team on. the right questions. Jack's team can only answer yes or no, so, Julian and team, uh, if Jack would like to go over and put the uh, mask on, you have some masks ready? Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to uh, to enjoy yourself, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain poetic justice at work here, I feel. Julian, John <laughs> Wolfe, if you're ready and you'd like to ask questions. <laughs> Is it a male? <laughs> Don't rush, cos we're having a great time. <laughs> Are we three characters from a show? <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Have you got have you got a piece of paper with your name and address written on? <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Are we on in the evening or during the day? The 70s. <laughs> <laughs> but it would have been. Am I male or female? Who knows? <laughs> yes. No. Is it a sitcom? Is yes. it a what? Yes. Yes. Sitcom, yes, yes. Sir. A it sitcom. is a sitcom. Yeah. Mm. Um, is it? Are there any animals in the show? <laughs> no, no, hold on. Yes, yes. yes. There's a sort of there's references. Well, it's tough because I don't know whether no. you do we ever see the beast in question. Mm. No, no. Just, no. But the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Is there it was... a pussy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So then it's are you being served, isn't it? Yes, it is. Don't take off. Don't, don't take them off. Excellent detective work, John. Wolf is Mrs. Slocum. Ah. Wolf is Mrs. Slocum. In, in many ways, I suspect. <laughs> We're going to have words later. So, uh... I think I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> John, before you take yours up, would you stand up and do a little bit of a wave for us? <laughs> <laughs> it's like being at the carnival, isn't it? Your turn now, Jack Steen. Uh, you've oh. done your goggles. Julian will now transform each of you into a famous TV face. Here he comes now with your mask. No peeking. And the rules are you. just Stand the same. Right. You can ask questions. <laughs> Be gentle with me, Julian. <laughs> there. <laughs> You're a bit top-heavy. OK. How's Jack? that? Careful. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's there we go. My nose. Four characters. Are you ready? Uh, if you are, start questioning. Would I be um, a guest on Vanessa? <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. No. 
<laughs> is it a television programme? Yes, of course. Yes. yes. Right. Mark, everything on this show <laughs> is a television programme. <laughs> I can't stress that. I it's don't even it. it's in the title. <laughs> Are we uh, real people or, or, or are we c cartoon? Yes. Well, yes. Oh. <laughs> I can only say yes or no. No, uh, you're just being very difficult on purpose now. <laughs> you know you can say yes, cartoons. What well, cartoon is it? <laughs> <laughs> are we a family? Yes. yes. Are we the Osmonds? <laughs> But we're a cartoon family. Yes. <laughs> but the Simpsons. Cool. Yeah. There we go. Well, as we head towards the end of the show, I see that Julian's team are behind with just 11 points. Jack's team, a fabulous 12. <laughs> OK, it's, uh, it's our final round now, and as regular viewers will know, it's called Thank Christ It's Nearly Over, <laughs> or Catchphrase for short. Every show generates its own sayings. Already this show boasts a legendary and unforgettable moment every week when Jack says... And Julian wickedly comes back quick as a flash with... <laughs> Solid gold, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Teams, I'm going to give you the first half of a well-known TV catchphrase. Please finish me off. And while you're doing that, give me the second half as well, OK? <laughs> You've got 90 seconds starting now. From the X-Files, the truth is... Jack. There's nothing else on. <laughs> the truth is... Out there. Yeah, well done. Sir Scotty from Star Trek was known for saying, She'll not dick... It in the mouth. <laughs> She'll not tick. My, my accent, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll not tick. I'll give you one more try. Uh, she'll no tick it, Captain. The Dilithian crystals are cracking <laughs> <up>. <laughs> that's, that's close enough for me. From Highlander, I, uh, there's the quote, I was born 400 years ago in the Highlands of Scotland. I am... Interbred. <laughs> <laughs> no, good guess. Sean Connery. No. <laughs> immortal, immortal. Oh. He's 400 years old. From the Adventures of Superman, look in the sky. Is it a... A plane full of pissed gypsies. <laughs> I love Virginia. <laughs> is it a bird? Is it a plane? Yeah, no, Julian. It... From uh, Kane from Kung Fu said, remember, the wise man walks... But the effeminate man minces. True, isn't it? Remember, the wise man walks... Walks in Clark's commando shoes with the compass in the heel. <laughs> no, but I remember them very fondly. Mm. No, the answer is always with his head bowed, humble like the dust. And I look at the final scores, and just as I predicted, it's a draw, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 13 to both. None of this has mattered. <laughs> Oh, Mark, lucky it really matters who listen, wins bus listen, listen. every week. <laughs> there's four of us, we've got a better chance it. Let them win, cos there's four of us, we'll let them you win. You shut your face, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> We'll leave you with another look at the moment on Roy Walker's catchphrase when Mr Chips appeared to be charming that enormous steak of his a little too vigorously for my personal comfort. Good night, everybody. Seven, five seconds, here we go. Screens, concentrate. Here we go. <laughs> Sean, snake charmer. Yeah!